I've been looking for an affordable long distance bike recently and I started off by looking at adventure bikes like the Suzuki V-Stream 1050. But when I tested that bike, I found it quite heavy, not particularly exciting and not especially powerful. So instead I turned my attention to the BMW F900XR and the new Honda Transalp 750. Those two bikes have roughly the same power as the Big Suzy, but are much lighter, cheaper, and more sophisticated. So today I'll tell you how the ADV style Honda Transalp compares with the tall rounder style BMW F900XR. Now I rode each bike for about an hour, so this won't be a full in-depth review, but I did ride them both back to back on the same day. So I'll cover the key basic areas of riding position and comfort, wind protection, performance and handling, plus a few other points worth considering for each bike. And if you stick around to the end, I'll tell you which bike I'm going to buy. And finally, for reference, I'm six foot one with a 33 inch inseam and my current bike is a Yamaha MT-10, so that's what I'm used to riding. We'll start with the Transalp because that's probably why most of you are here. The seating position is bolt upright with no reach to the bars whatsoever. The seat feels lower than its 850mm, presumably because it's narrow at the front, but it's still a very tall bike and the high cockpit area makes you feel like you're sitting low in the bike. And annoyingly the foot pegs are right where you'd normally put your feet down when you come to a stop, so waddling the bike along is a bit precarious. Now ergonomics are very personal and vary from person to person, but I actually found the seating position a tiny bit uncomfortable. It might be because I'm used to a slightly more lent forward riding position of a super naked, or because the Transalp seat is absolutely rock solid, but I could feel a little discomfort in my lower back, even on this short ride. And I used to get the same sensation on my Triumph Scrambler 1200. But the benefit of the high dash area is that the wind protection is absolutely fantastic. Now I almost didn't bother testing the Transalp because I thought the screen looked far too small to be effective, but I had no wind on my shoulders, just a little on the top of my helmet, and while the tall screen does generate a fair amount of noise, it was quiet enough not to bother me. And because the wind protection was so good, I felt the bike encouraged me to sit at a higher speed, and 95 miles per hour felt totally fine, which I really appreciate on longer journeys. The suspension is generally fine and comfortable and the Transalp can blast over potholes and speed bumps without slowing down and that encourages you to stand on the foot pegs when you do so, which is also great fun. But while the suspension is nice and comfy, it does feel a bit wallowy. There's a lot of travel in the springs which makes it dive quite hard under strong braking and if you're looking for a sporty ride, quite simply the Transalp isn't for you. Don't get me wrong, it can hustle considering it's an adventure bike, but the BMW is, perhaps unsurprisingly, vastly superior in that area, as I'll tell you in a moment, and the Transalp doesn't feel like it wants to be ridden hard. However, the engine is another strong area. On paper, 94 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot to me, having come from a 160 horsepower Super Naked, but it's got all the power you need for a bike like this. It doesn't feel like you have power in reserve, and I found myself on full throttle pretty much all of the time, but it can still accelerate hard even at high speed, and I didn't feel like I'd need more power for what this bike is designed to do, i.e. munch miles. And finally, I'll tell you about a few practical matters. As I mentioned, the seat is far too hard and I'd want to spec a comfort seat, but the dash is excellent, clear and bright, and I had no problem seeing it even on this sunny day in June. The mirrors also did their job very well with no blur that I noticed, and this bike was averaging 60 miles per gallon, which means you'd get around 220 miles if you brimmed it, then rode it to empty, so more realistically, you'll be looking for fuel at around the 170, 180 miles mark. And finally, it only has a two year warranty compared to the BMW's three, although it is of course a Honda and no Honda vehicle has suffered any mechanical problems since 1927. So how does the BMW F900XR compare to the Transalp? Well, I personally much prefer the seating position. It's still upright in the same way a comfortable super naked is, so there's a slight lean towards the bar, but it's not uncomfortable, there's no weight on your wrists, and it felt like an all day seating position to me. The seat height also felt really natural. There was a slight bend in my legs, but again, not uncomfortably so. And that of course means you can put your feet down without the pegs getting in the way like they do on the Transalp. But while the seat height was great, the seat itself was frankly an absolute disgrace. It's even harder than the already firm Transalp, which I find bizarre given the target market for this bike must have at least one eye, maybe even two, on comfort. The suspension though was very good, quite sporty without sacrificing plushness or comfort, and much better suited to the type of bike this is, i.e. a sporty bike that can tour a bit. 
It also handles much better than the Transalp of course, and I felt encouraged to ride it a bit harder in the corners. Because it's so tall, it does feel a little bit awkward in the twisties compared to something like a more sport focused bike, but I found myself hunting out tighter roads on this bike, and I feel like that kind of riding really suits the BMW. And while the Transalp was much more comfortable, the Beamer was still comfortable enough, and you'd be pleased you were on it once you got to the twisty section at the end of your long journey. As to wind protection though, I found it to be something of a mixed bag. The screen is very easily adjustable, the best adjusting mechanism I've used in fact, and in its low position it was actually fairly quiet. However in its low position that meant I had wind on my shoulders and the top of my lid, and I found that speeds above 80 mph on the motorway were not much fun. And while you can fix that by putting the screen up, the wind noise on the screen then becomes far too loud and really quite unpleasant. I couldn't hear myself talk in my helmet, so you'd absolutely want to make sure you wear earplugs for any kind of motorway work on this bike, and even then, I think I'd definitely want to buy an upgraded touring screen. Saving the best for last though, and we have the engine. It only has 10 more horsepowers than the Transalp and is about 10 kilos heavier, so I expected both bikes to feel fairly similar, but the BMW is much faster than the Transalp. I didn't find myself using full throttle anywhere near as much as on the Honda, and the Beamer felt like it had power to spare most of the time. And while it's often said that parallel twins are boring, I was thoroughly impressed with this engine, and I'd happily have this as my only bike, even if that meant selling the MT. 10. And I'll finish on a few practical matters before I tell you what bike I bought. The quick shifter on the Beamer was generally very good, albeit sometimes a little clunky, but it's good enough that it would be a must have option for me. It also has a remote preload adjuster so you can easily dial the back end up if you take a pillion, and the BMW dash really is quite something. That's one of the least important things to mention, but it's so easy to read which means it doesn't distract you from the ride. And finally it has a 3 year warranty, so that will last the full term of your 36 month PCP deal. And so to the conclusion then. Well unsurprisingly the BMW is much sportier than the Transalp, and the Transalp is much plusher. So really it comes down to what your priority is, comfort and wind protection, or sportiness and fun factor. And whilst I really like the Transalp, of the two bikes I personally preferred the BMW. I actually found it more comfortable, with the exception of wind protection and the firm seat, and it is 10 times better in the twisties, and I thought the Beamer was a really fun bike to ride. So for that reason I think it's a better all rounder than the Transalp, and is the better compromise in terms of performance and comfort, whereas the Transalp was more of a distance specialist, of course with the added benefit of some off-road chops, which I didn't get to try out. But with that being said, when it came time to buy, I was frustrated by the price of the optional extras on the BMW. And the version of the bike you want isn't the 10 grand list price, it's closer to 13 grand, maybe even more, and that puts it in competition with the Suzuki GSSX 1000 GT, which is ultimately what I bought. I think the BMW is a stonking bike for 10 or 11 grand, but when you add options it means it's swimming in waters that for me it has no place to be, and you can get something much more capable for that kind of money. Now I hope you enjoyed the video or at least found it useful, if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more biking content, and until next time, ride safe.